Hello, welcome to the Single African Market Program, dedicated to focusing all lenses on the actions and activities around the vision of the continent of Africa to integrate its market. Now, we believe in the fact that it is when we bring a lot of information to the general public and the continent of Africa, that is when we can keep officialdom who have the responsibility and the task to make this vision a reality uh, on, on their toes and also get them encouraged that we are anticipating the outcome of this whole vision, then they will do more to make it a reality for all of us. That's why we bring you every action around this particular vision. And this week, we are going to relive the year 2021 together with the Secretary General of the EFCFTA Secretariat, His Excellency Wam Kilimene. He tells us a lot about 2021. He says there have been challenges, there have also been successes, and the success stories far exceed the challenges. Let's listen to him in this particular interview. I'm sure that to you and to almost all of us will be a very uh, uneventful year so far. Uh, particularly when the entire continent began the implementation of the EFCFTA from, from the 1st of January. Uh, uh, for you, who is in the thick of events, who is leading almost everything uh, together with your team, how has the year been for you? Well, it's been a very, very difficult year. Um, it is never easy to... Uh, implement a trade agreement. Mm. It is even more difficult to implement a trade agreement in the middle of a pandemic, yeah. a global yeah. pandemic, because of the disruptions to supply chains. <clears throat> Last year we had um, border closures. 42 countries in Africa were either in a full or a partial lockdown uh, and border closure. So it's been very, very difficult. However, uh, at the same time, I've received a lot of support from, uh, from heads of states, from ministers of trade, from the private sector in Africa, uh, who all of them want to see this happen. All of them want to make sure that this agreement is implemented and that we succeed in, in moving forward on Africa's economic development. We've had good success in my view. Good. We have had um, the start of trading, as you mentioned. We now have a second, we now have 39 countries that have ratified the agreement, making this the fastest instrument in the uh, African Union to be ratified. Uh, we have hosted here in Accra uh, four meetings of ministers of trade. We've succeeded to establish Accra as, as Africa's trade and commercial diplomacy capital. Great. We are uh, soon to be launching a pan-African settlement system to support the AFCFTA here uh, in Accra on the 13th of January. So we've had tremendous success. Mm -hmm. um, we've negotiated rules of origin, and we, we have uh, a very, very strong basis for starting uh, the next year. Yeah, I'm sure that you had uh, <coughs> timelines to what you needed to achieve within the, within the year, or probably you had KPIs. Uh, if you take a look at them, uh, whatever agenda that you had personally, or the, uh, the indices that you had set for yourself from the beginning, would you say that you've been able to clear all of them and, and even exceed what, what was expected of you? We have not been able to clear all of them. Uh, for example, I would have hoped that by now we, uh, we have all African countries who would have ratified the agreement establishing the AFCFTA. We have not been able to achieve that. Uh, we also have not been able to uh, get to 90% of coverage of rules of origin. We are now at 87.6%. Um, uh, and so I think as much as uh, we, we gave this a very, very strong good faith effort. Uh, we had challenges along the way. Uh, but I think the, the, the successes, in my view, outweigh the challenges and the setbacks uh, that, uh, that we had. But we have to be realistic yeah. in the sense that we have not been able to achieve all that 
we sought to achieve uh, by the end of this year. And you've been in Malawi, I saw you uh, mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe for the Zim trade, for instance. You've been in Togo and quite a number of places. How is the continent and the nations on the continent receiving this whole vision? I have um, visited many, many countries uh, during the course of this year. The, what's interesting about all of these visits in all the countries that I go to is the desire. I've been very pleasantly surprised that Africans want to uh, establish a new trade pattern. They want to trade more with other African countries and less um, with the old trade patterns. Africans want to see a spirit of entrepreneurship being developed by this agreement and being nurtured by this agreement. Women in trade, young entrepreneurs. When I was in Malawi, you mentioned Malawi, I met a, an entrepreneur, a young woman, who produces her own, um, she's in the agro-processing business, uh, does value addition uh, to uh, apples, makes orange juice, apple juice, um, a range of different agro-processing and value-added products that, um, that she exports. And she's looking forward to having the entire continent uh, as her market under the AFCFTA. Same thing in other countries. The, the desire of Africans for this to happen is very, very high. And that's what encourages me is, is that we have the support of small medium enterprises. We have the support of uh, large African multinational corporations. We have the support of uh, the civil society in Africa. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the support of um, ministers of trade and uh, the, the heads of states themselves. And so we have a very, very strong momentum as we enter uh, uh, 2022, very strong momentum to make sure that uh, this does indeed become a, um, a reality for all of us. I'm happy to hear about the enthusiasm. Doesn't that put a lot of pressure on the Secretariat to also deliver? Because you have a lot of young people who are hoping that uh, maximum next year, they mm -hmm. should be able to move their goods from one country to the other without paying duty. Yeah. They should be able to move uh, their products from Ghana to, say, South Africa with a harmonized standards uh, uh, system. What can you say to these people who are so enthusiastic and hoping to see some physical evidence of this whole vision? Well, you're absolutely right. The expectations are very high, understandably so. Uh, Africa has been in this state of fragmentation for 65 years, 70 years. Um, and so finally, through the AFCFTA, Africans see that this is an opportunity for us uh, to take the final step towards uh, unification of our continent. And so it's a very important, symbolically, it's important to millions and millions of Africans uh, from a political perspective. Uh, but more importantly, it's, it's symbolic from a market integration. The fact that you will now be in Ghana and you will have access to the market in East Africa, in Southern Africa, in North Africa, and so forth. So it's, it's a very symbolic uh, 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 state <coughs> of achievement that we are in. We are, however, as you say, we are under immense pressure um, to meet the very, very high expectations to make sure that um, this agreement delivers. The, any trade agreement, any trade agreement always takes time before we see the results, sometimes two to three years before we see the trade flows, before we see enhanced uh, trade amongst countries. And so we should expect that this will be the same uh, with us too uh, in, in the context of the AFCFTA. There will always be work that has to be done after the agreement enters into force, establishing supply networks, ensuring that small medium enterprises have access uh, to the new market. We had a very successful intra-Africa trade fair, yeah. which is one of the tools uh, for implementation of the AFCFTA. And so I think um, the, the expectations are very high, but we are determined to do all that we can 
to make sure that this does uh, become a reality. Yeah, and on, on the intra-Africa trade, maybe I would, I would love to hear from you directly exactly uh, what, what the benefits have been for, for the continent's businesses. If you can be specific with us, what, what were some specific achievements from this particular one? And then, and then what can young entrepreneurs learn from something like what we witnessed in Durban? It was a resounding success, the Intra-Africa Trade Fair in Durban. First, I have to thank the government of uh, South Africa and the government of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, the province uh, where the trade fair uh, took place in. They were able to arrange it at uh, last minute, very, very successful. Over 10,000 people attended the trade fair, mm -hmm. 1,200 exhibitors, and trade transactions, 42 billion United States dollars in about five days. And all of this happening uh, in the middle of a pandemic. What really was uh, um, satisfying was that the majority of attendees, exhibitioners, were young entrepreneurs. We saw young Africans, young entrepreneurs in large numbers, larger than the corporations um, who attended, was mainly small medium enterprises that are led by young, young entrepreneurs. Uh, we, as a secretariat, we hosted a number of sessions, of panels, uh, through the week. And one of the key uh, aspects that came to the fore very strongly is the fact that this agreement must deliver for young Africans. And so I was very proud that, as I say, the majority of um, attendees were young entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, and that was very encouraging because they see the value of intra-Africa trade. They understand that the AFCFTA opens markets. And after we've opened the market um, de jure in law, which is what the AFCFTA does, there has to be a complementary step, and that is to connect um, uh, small medium enterprises, to connect traders across the African continent and that's what the trade fair is all about. Yeah. It provides that platform for connectivity. Uh, I have heard from, uh, for instance, folks within the freight forwarding fraternity and fo folks who are doing business on the ground that if we are not careful, we would have the AFCFTA turn into uh, uh, something that would favor the conference entrepreneurs instead of real entrepreneurs who are on the ground. So people who are interested in conferences, people who are attending big forums and all of that, that is where the concentration will be. But we'll find it difficult to make it practical on the ground so that the folks or the, the woman who is bringing tomatoes from Ouagadougou to uh, uh, Accra, Ghana, for instance, would not be actually seeing the AFCFTA. How do we balance the, the high level of forums and, and the conferences and what, what's supposed to be felt on the ground? You're right. You're absolutely right. We have to be um, careful that we bring in segments of our society that previously uh, have been left behind. Um, if you, you, you mentioned correctly small traders uh, across borders, we are introducing what we call a simplified trade regime mm. so that if your goods are below a certain threshold, below a certain amount, you are exempt from any um, uh, uh, rules of origin, uh, procedures, that ordinarily would uh, cost a lot of money. Mm. That's what we want to see, the AFCFTA touching people's lives yeah. in that way. Yeah. Uh, so that this small trader who's trading between Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, uh, they see the benefits of the AFCFTA. Mm. They may never set foot in a conference room yeah. talking about the AFCFTA, but if we are able to make sure that as they trade across borders, that they, uh, the, the administrative burden is reduced or eliminated. The customs uh, procedures uh, are, are, are made more efficient. I think this is the success that we would want to see. Yeah. That's how the AFCFTA would make a difference in people's lives who don't attend these high-level conferences. Yeah. And this is my ambition. Yeah. This is absolutely my ambition. 
I want to make sure that we have um, a trade agreement that accommodates all our business community, whether it is an informal trader, whether it is a small medium enterprise, a large corporation, everybody must see the benefits uh, of this agreement. Yeah, and, 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 and indeed, I, I noticed that, that that's, you are quite passionate about that because you've already been to the, the, the Abidjan Lagos corridor. You've been to the uh, Togo. Recently, you were in Togo for a conference. And how do you think we, we should or we can't be able to eliminate some of the bottlenecks that we see. There are people have complained about duplication of processes at the various borders. We have a lot of trucks lined up at the borders mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, for, sometimes for no apparent reasons because it's just basic documentations that officials are making it extremely difficult for travelers to be able to move freely. How do you think that you should be able to push, even before a lot of documentations and rules are made ready, for these things to ease up, to allow free movement of goods and services at the various borders that we have? This is um, where the, the rubber hits the tar. Trade facilitation, transit of goods, customs procedures. Uh, if we want to double intra-Africa trade by the year 2035, transit of goods has to be uh, something that we prioritize. Yeah. Between Abidjan and uh, Lagos, a distance of 1,200 kilometers, mm -hmm. there are 37 checkpoints. Yeah. It takes between 12 and 15 days for goods to transit from Abidjan to, um, to Lagos. That is uncompetitive. Yeah. Uh, and it costs traders money. Uh, it makes the region inefficient. There are other corridors that uh, also have similar challenges. It's not just here. And so what, what we are focusing on as a, as a secretariat is how do we boost competitiveness of each trade corridor? Every trade corridor in Africa that is competitive, it's not to the benefit of that region. It's to the benefit of the entire continent. And so we, we, are, we want to tackle some of the challenges in our trade corridors. Uh, for example, customs procedures interconnectivity in terms of information systems. Some of our customs authorities, they use different systems mm. that do not interconnect, uh, which in part is why trucks usually are lined up um, kilometers at, at our borders. And so we've got to look at best practice um, and see how we can improve on international best practice and implement it here. If you go to East Africa today, goods transiting from Port of Mombasa uh, to Uganda, two to three days. Previously, it took about five, seven, eight days, uh, a distance of 1,600 kilometers. Now, it takes at the most three days I see. because of the... Uh, technology that has been introduced, the infrastructure that has been introduced to make sure that there's connectivity of systems, that uh, the border process is efficient. So it's possible. Mm. We know from the experience of East Africa that it's actually possible. In fact, what we want to do is that all trade corridors on our continent are as competitive as anywhere else in the world. Yeah. It's going to take time. It's going to take investment, but I believe we have to do it. Yeah, but, but then how do we do it? How, how do we get the other corridors to emulate what has happened in East Africa, having goods uh, moving from Mombasa to Kampala, for instance, within three days? How do you or your outfit or the secretariat encourage the other regions to be able to tag along this particular example? Because that's basically what everybody is looking for. Well, we already have started working uh, on the Abidjan-Lagos trade corridor uh, to introduce uh, new systems to make the corridor uh, efficient in terms of transit times. Uh, of course, it's going to take time, two to three years, but again, from the experience of East Africa, it took them about uh, four or five years to, to achieve the level of success that they have today. So we should expect that uh, all other corridors uh, it will take uh, a similar amount of time. Uh, the starting point is to work with the ministries of trade, the customs authorities uh, in, in individual countries, 
We were in Togo, in Lome, on the 17th of September. We convened the customs authorities, uh, along with uh, the uh, ministries of trade. We now have a roadmap um, of uh, the hard work, yeah. very hard work that has to be done. Uh, as I mentioned, introduction of common systems, introduction of uh, harmonized customs procedures, transit procedures, and all of these things are made provision for in the AFCFTA. They just have to be implemented. And so we want to work with uh, individual governments uh, along the corridor here and other corridors to make sure that all of the aspirations that are in the AFCFTA, that we translate them into practice on the ground. I cannot end without asking you about COVID and, yes. and the impact that it has had on the, on the continent in particular, the, 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 the globe as well. You were in Abidjan yeah. uh, and you talked extensively about some of the impact and all of that. Now we are hearing a lot of travel bans so for member party, uh, party states or countries yes. on the continent. How has COVID dealt with us? And with all the travel bans and the sort of stories we are hearing around, how do we deal with it getting into 2022? Well, uh, the, the, the travel restrictions and the bans, uh, in my view, are a despicable act of um, countries that were suffering already uh, because of COVID, and now you impose a travel restriction that will severely, uh, severely impact negatively on their economies. Second, these travel restrictions have a very negative effect on supply chains, particularly as we seek to enhance, um, as we seek to improve access to, to vaccines. Uh, it is unjustifiable in terms of uh, science that we see these travel restrictions. Botswana, South Africa are the countries that did the, the genome sequencing to detect Omicron. Um, instead of countries around the world expressing solidarity, uh, expressing solidarity, global solidarity, what we see is absolutely the opposite, uh, that countries are being punished for identifying um, a variant of uh, the, uh, the virus, which actually we now know existed in Europe before it was detected in Botswana and South Africa. We also have reason to believe that it is actually, um, it, it came f to Southern Africa from other parts of the world, but was simply detected in Southern Africa. And so this is, in my view, it is, it is akin to apartheid. It is no different from the apartheid laws that, we've saw, that we saw. It's no different from colonialism. It's neo-colonialism, as I've said. And it is a violation of international trade law to discriminate against countries in the way in which African countries are being discriminated against uh, the stigmatization that is being uh, um, uh, thrown at countries in Southern Africa. We see very racist cartoons depicting Africans in Europe. We see these cartoons depicting Africans as disease carriers uh, across the world. It is apartheid. It is apartheid. It is racism. It is wrong. It is immoral. It is inconsistent with the spirit of global solidarity that we should be building. We are a trade secretariat. We are looking at this from a trade point of view. It's a violation of international trade law. It is nothing more than a violation of international trade law under WTO law. And so I would urge and call on these countries to, um, to lift uh, these travel restrictions, to rescind them. I don't think that they're going to do it because they've demonstrated that they don't care about the dignity of Africans. Uh, and I want to say to them that the days when we as Africans were negotiating with them, our dignity, those days are gone. And they were very unhappy days to begin with anyway. We are not going to negotiate the dignity of African human beings. 
Those days are long over. Um, they must respect Africans. They must respect the contribution of, of Africans to global science. It is because of scientists in Botswana and in South Africa that we now know of this variant. If it was not for scientists in Botswana and uh, South Africa, the variant would still be circulating around the world with dire consequences for the global economy. And so it's, it is a very, very regrettable state of affairs that these countries um, have put us in, completely devoid of any logic. Mozambique has no strain, uh, has no uh, Omicron variant uh, reported. Countries in Europe have more cases of Omicron than Mozambique and Malawi and Zambia. And yet those countries are not banned. But you ban Mozambique, uh, Eswatini, and so on. It's racism. That's what it is. It's racism. And it's totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. If this stays like this, how would it affect our vision, our plan to integrate, getting well, into next year? I think that w what it does is to underscore the importance of us accelerating Africa's self-sufficiency and accelerating Africa's industrial development capacity so that we stop looking at others, um, parts of the world, stop looking at others as a, um, a market for us. We should focus on building this market on our continent and we should focus on making sure that um, we, we no longer require vaccines to be brought in to, uh, into Africa from other parts of the world, that we boost our uh, productive capacity of vaccines, of generic drugs, and so on. And so the lesson I would suggest from this experience is that we must accelerate Africa's industrial development. I appreciate the opportunity, Your Excellency, but if you don't mind and give a festive message uh, to, to Christians, particularly for, for the Christmas and then for, for the continent entirely for the new year? Well, I would wish all Africans a, a joyful and a happy uh, Christmas season and, of course, very, very safe uh, Christmas season as we confront and battle uh, this uh, virus. We look forward to uh, a new year, a prosperous new year, where we will achieve success. Also, that was His, His Excellency Wam Kilimene, uh, the Secretary General of the EFCFTA Secretariat, and not exactly enthused at all about the travel bans that the West uh, imposed on some African countries. And he's not alone. Quite a number of African countries and individuals and personalities are not enthused at all about this travel ban. And even though he felt in that interview that he's not going to be listened to, uh, the United Kingdom, for instance, has lifted the ban on about 11 countries uh, together with some that we're hoping they will also listen to what the ESG said. Now, next week, we'll bring you a second part of that particular uh, interview with the Secretary General. He will be talking a lot about special areas like transit, business, uh, the special economic zone, together with the AFCFTA integration and all of that should come up in that particular interview. In the meantime, right after that interview with the ESG, he had to catch a flight all the way to Washington uh, where he addressed the Wilson Center. Uh, very passionate once again about the travel ban plus many more other issues concerning Africa. Listen. His Excellency Wam Kelemene, Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA Secretariat, in a keynote speech, highlighted damaging effects of entrenched misperceptions and negative attitudes about Africa. Africa is not about what one human being once described, and excuse my language, but Africa is not about what one human being described as shithole countries. There certainly is a great deal more to our continent than the perceptions that we sometimes see on mainstream media with a child who is uh, hungry and has flies around her face. Those days of that continent uh, are long gone. We now are a continent that before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic was growing um, at about 3.5% uh, GDP. 
and of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world at that time, uh, six were on the African continent. So certainly, we are nowhere near what this human being described uh, to depict uh, the image of our continent. While acknowledging the difficulty in implementing a free trade agreement among 55 member countries of the African Union, Secretary General Mene pointed out that the fact that 39 countries have ratified the agreement points to the widespread political will of African leaders. So out of 55 countries, we now have 39 state parties to the agreement establishing the AFCFTA. Only one country has not signed the agreement as, uh, establishing the AFCFTA. And the fact that we have 39 countries demonstrates political will, demonstrates legal commitment to uh, liberalization of intra-Africa trade, to liberalization of intra-Africa in investment, and of course, it demonstrates Africa's commitment to being a favorable investment climate uh, for all to benefit from. The countries that have not yet ratified are engaged in very necessary domestic consultations and legal processes, and obviously it is a sovereign decision to enter into an international agreement, and we have to respect that. The SG of the AFCFTA Secretary is very passionate about the role of young entrepreneurs, women in trade, and all of that when it comes to the AFCFTA. And this week, there have been a summit for young entrepreneurs and awarding some of them uh, in their various endeavors. The Young Entrepreneurs Summit Expo Underworld 2021 has been held in Accra with focus on magnifying the voices of young people. We believe that we must incorporate training mm -hmm. and information dissemination on the after in our program. Yeah. It should be a critical part of what we do. So you can see that many of those who are in the export sector are SMEs and women. It's very very important for us. And so at the Tamil Export Promotion Authority, we have come up with a lot of innovative programs to support the of women, the youth, and SME exports. This is the fifth edition since it commenced in 2016. The Executive Secretary of the Pan-African SMEs Network, organizers of the three-day dialogue in partnership with the Ghana Startup Network, Solomon Ejei, stated that the program seeks to close the information gap on the EFCFT among young people. Some young entrepreneurs were awarded for their achievements. So as we talk about encouraging young entrepreneurs and women in trade, this week we are placing our lenses on a young lady, a young entrepreneur who is adding a lot of value to lemongrass. She's also adding value to dawa dawa and prekese, which are very important uh, ingredients uh, in uh, our African dishes and all of that. She has it in a very solid package and a very decent uh, package that she believes should sell on the shelves of any African market. My name is Lindsay Efia Batmaidu and I started Label Farms last year in May after the COVID with the aim of creating job opportunities and providing healthy foods for individuals through convenient means. Okay, so we produce lemongrass tea, natural cocoa powder, the dawa dawa powder and the precursor powder. We have plans of introducing more healthy foods into the country. With our main product, that's the lemongrass, we, we've been able to acquire a two acre land where we grow the um, lemongrass ourselves. We've been able to engage four farmers who see to the day-to-day -day activities on the farm. We have plans on expanding the size of the farm and maybe also introduce other pro, um, healthy foods by growing them ourselves producing it to here at Label Farms. Our main aim is to produce healthy foods. And we all know the health benefits of lemongrass. It boosts metabolism, it burns fat, it detox the body, it cleanses the body. And we've done it in a way that is just convenient for everyone. You can enjoy your lemongrass tea in your office, at home, even if you're on a flight, you can have some in your bag. One thing about lemongrass is it helps release stress. After I had this work at home, the office, 
anywhere. You can come home and enjoy the lemongrass. Anyone can enjoy it. And it can be taken any time of the day because it doesn't have caffeine. It's caffeine free. After we go to the farm to harvest it, we bring it here. We carefully process it, we carefully dry it, cut it into smaller pieces and get it into tea bags where you just have to just pour your hot water. And those of us with the sweet tooth, you can add your sugar and your milk to it and you are good to go. So after we do all that, have it into the powdered form, we take it into the tea bags where you see how they are doing it and we have it in the boxes. It comes 20 tea bags in a box, at least to last you for a month. It's sealed with this um, genuine quality guaranteed sticker. It's sealed this way. So with the help of the GEA, we've been able to acquire our FDA certificates. Hence, our products can be sold in any markets in other African countries. We are having plans of having it in every shop, every supermarket, every corner, everywhere. You can just walk into your local shop in the community and you see the lemongrass there. Everybody needs to have one and enjoy it because it's of good quality and it's healthy. It's 100% natural, no additives, and it's coming directly from our farms. We have the natural cocoa powder, we have the dawa dawa powder, and we have the prekese powder. So these are other products, that's the natural cocoa powder. It comes in 400 grams and 200 grams. It's very healthy, it boosts the immune system, it reduces high blood pressure, and it also aids in weight loss. Anyone can get it, anyone should get it. We are looking forward to having it in every other country, Burkina, Nigeria, Togo. Our labels are written both in English and French. Hence, anyone, Anglophone or Francophone, can have it, read the instructions, and take it, and we are good to go. We also have the natural precursive powder, 100% natural, no additives. It boosts the immune system, it helps in wound healing in the body, and it also has the anti-inflammatory properties. It adds some very good flavor to our soups, especially the palm nut soup. The packaging is of good quality and is bilingual, ready to be sold in any market, any anglophone or francophone market across the globe or the African continent. And it's easy to use, you just have to pair it this way. Use a dry spoon, fetch some, pour it into your soups or just pour it in it. warm water and drink it. After that, seal it back and you are good to go. It's very, very affordable. We also have the natural dawa dawa powder. It's very healthy, very, very healthy and of good quality. It's 100% natural, no additives. It boosts the immune system. It reduces high blood pressure and it can be used during food preparations. When seasoning your meat, your fish, your chicken, instead of adding stock cubes, Dawa Dawa would do the magic for you. It's FDA approved through the Ghana Enterprise Agency. They did it just for us for free, no stress. I, I got my FDA approval within a month and I'm grateful to them for that. We have plans of taking our products onto the other African countries because with our labeling, it's bilingual, it's English and it's in French. So anyone who can speak both languages can understand what we are about and what we have in the box. As a young lady like me, I have plans on exporting, expanding the business to other African countries, having it in Togo, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, even we are in talks with a distributor in South Africa. So we are looking forward to the officials and authorities to implement the APTA. Now when the APTA is being implemented and I get to export my items to other African countries, our, the business would be able to employ more people because we would have to expand, we would have to produce more to meet the market, hence providing more job opportunities for people in my community. I'm very excited about the AFTA because it's going to help young people like me 
or anyone who is looking forward to selling his or her products in other African countries. We are excited as a business about APTA because it would aid in transporting our items to other countries, devoid of certain barriers and duties. Hence, as a food processing factory, our mission is to produce healthy foods. Anyone in Burkina, Togo, Nigeria can also enjoy the healthy foods we produce here at Labelle Farms. With the products we produce here at Labelle Farms, we are able to add value to the raw materials and engaging the local farmers, providing ready markets for their products. Because with the lemongrass, if it hadn't been for Labelle Farm, the local farmer there in the Volta region wouldn't know what he's going to do with it. But we can buy processes into tea bags ready for the market. And with thanks to APTA, we would be able to export to other countries by getting the market for them and creating job, more job opportunities for the local farmers out there. As we are in the month of December, we are celebrating all our local farmers and I want to wish them well as a business label farms. We are ready to work with them by adding value to their raw materials, buying from them and with after, when we are able to export the product to other countries, we will create more opportunities for our local farmers in Ghana. Let's now turn our attentions to other news and events and activities that are happening around this whole vision of the continent of Africa to integrate. <music> Representatives from the AFCFTA Secretariat, Trademark East Africa and Borderless Alliance in coordination with the Ministry of Trade and Industry of Ghana have conducted a joint technical visit to the Aklao border to engage with the key agencies operating at the border to discuss their priority needs towards enhancing free movement of goods and people across the Abidjan-Lagos corridor, with emphasis on Ghana's borders. The visit followed an earlier mission in Togo, where the AFCFDA Secretariat organized a forum to assess the condition of the Abidjan-Lagos corridor. The technical visit included an interactive dialogue with representatives from key border agencies led by Ghana Revenue Authority and Ghana Immigration Services, and also included other agencies such as the Food and Drugs Authority, Plant Protection and Regulatory Services Department, Veterinary Services Directorate, and Ghana Shippers Authority, with the latter doubling as host institution of Borderless Alliance in Ghana. <music> Weather report as well as the flat schedules for all African cities as well as the forex rate for the African market and the AFCFTA status for member countries next.
So we encourage you to also be part of the conversation on the AFC FTA that's ongoing on our various social media platforms. Uh, we would encourage you to be part of this conversation so that you know the paradigm uh, where the continent of Africa is drifting towards and you're not left behind. Next week, we're going to bring you a second part of the SG's interview where he talks a lot about other specific areas and what to expect in the year 2022, which you cannot afford to miss. Thank you for watching the program. See you same time next week.